Hi, this is Sue Merrick, and I'm speaking with Elizabeth Rumsey, the Senior Global Product Manager of Mech Edge Applications and Analytics at Vodafone Business. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Sue. Thanks for having me. So tell me first, first let's get started. How does your company define the edge? Because there's a lot of different definitions out there. It's a great question. And for me, I think the answer is there is more than one edge. We, Vodafone tends to describe the edge between two different flavors. You've got what we call the distributed edge, and that's where a customer is able to access the edge on our public mobile network. So it's on the edge of the public network. And then we refer to the dedicated edge, which is when it's dedicated on a customer premise. So that little bit closer to the, to the customer. I tend to think of it as either a multi-tenant environment on the distributed edge or a single tenant on the dedicated edge. And then obviously you have the device edge, but in, in my world, I, I don't really, it's, it is a layer of edge, but not one when I think about it as mech. Now, um, Vodafone collaborates with AWS, Amazon Web Services on its edge, its edge services. So can you explain how that partnership works? Sure. And um, I guess one thing to say is we absolutely do collaborate with AWS and we're really proud of that partnership. So the, um, AWS is our first partner on what I referred to as the distributed edge. So we were announced by AWS as their first partner in Europe for Wavelength. And we launched that service together in the UK. In fact, we just had our first birthday last week. So mid-June, we launched our first service with our Wavelength zone in London last summer. And then in December, shortly before Christmas, we launched three sites in Germany as well. So I'm really proud that we're the first telco partner of AWS to have launched in more than one country. The only thing I'd say, though, is that AWS is actually not our only edge partner. We also partner with Microsoft Azure for our dedicated edge, working with them on their Azure Stack services. I see. And what use cases do you think are going to have the most promise when it comes to the edge? So, so far, we have seen some great learnings through something that's called our Edge Innovation Program, which we launched at the end of 2020 in anticipation of launching our dedicated Edge service with AWS. Based on the Edge Innovation Program so far, where we've run over 30 pilots across the UK and Germany, I would say our use cases tend to fall into one of five areas generally. The first one of those would be V to X, so vehicle to everything, that precursor to autonomous driving. The second one would be video analytics or video, um, sort of live video streaming use cases. Third would be in mixed reality, so either augmented or virtual reality. The fourth would be AI at the edge, so when you are running AI, but you need to do it in real time for those sorts of use cases. For example, we've seen some in worker safety. And then the fifth one would be where we've worked with broadcasters on use cases in live video production. And I think this is a question everyone is asking right now, is how do you think these edge services are going to make money? I think, well, so the the first way that we make money today is through um, sort of traditional infrastructure as a service. So just like the cloud makes money today, a user can now go onto their console, for example, with the distributed edge. And rather than choosing a region, they can choose to bring that data, bring that workload closer to where they are and um, use one of our wavelength zones. So very, very similar commercial model there. It's just in a different location and they pay a slight premium to reflect that enhanced service. But I think when we look forward, you can also look at monetizing the edge through an end-to-end -end solution. So for example, Vodafone does offer a few of those to our customers today. One of those is in mixed reality. Um, and we've also done some great pilots with our local operating company in Italy around offering those end-to-end -end solutions, but leveraging the edge as a commercial model. The third one that I think is um, more forward-looking, but one that really excites me in its potential is looking at edge as part of a wider platform as a service offering. So really bringing together the power of the network, the, the network and the compute to deliver a, a best on service to, to optimize that experience for developers. But like I said, it's not where we are today, but a place I'd really like to go in the future. And we've, we've seen um, a lot of analyst projections for how much edge revenue is going to, you know, is going, is go or how much edge is going to contribute to revenues. 
But when, what is the time frame, and when do you think edge services will really be able to generate measurable revenue? So I guess it depends upon what you what you call measurable, and I think that's relative to organizations. When you work in a multi-billion pound company like Vodafone, it's um it's difficult for the edge service to become so large that you're seeing it in our annual results. Um, however, we are seeing real we are seeing real revenues from that service today. Um, it's a question of how quickly the the market will adopt those services and and really scale them out to their out to their full potential I'm hopeful. I mean, going to conferences now over the last three years, it seems to be we always say this is the year. Um, and I do think it's one of those cases. There probably be, will, will be a tipping point. I'll be honest. Um, Sue, so I think if either you or I knew what that was, we'd be doing something different than our jobs today and be making a lot more money from it. But I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, at least the great thing is now the service is there. It's available. It's really a question of how we make it relevant and really get those get those use cases in for customers. And, and part of that will be the device ecosystem as well, because as we know, we don't have the full range of in devices that um, that are um, compatible with 5G today, for example. So we we're waiting for our iPhone moment, I guess you could say. So it sounds to me like you're seeing it's reality today. You are seeing measurable use cases and revenue, but you're expecting more, a lot bigger down the road. Significantly more. Absolutely. Significantly more. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Nice to speak with you.